For decades, China has been and still remains North Korea's most important ally, biggest trading partner, and main source of food, arms, and energy. But with strains in the relationship beginning to surface amid continued provocations by Pyongyang, where is the alliance headed? As North Korea continues to demand international recognition as a legitimate nuclear state, we discuss whether that is ever a possibility, as well as an outlook on the changing dynamics in Northeast Asia, today on Peninsula 24. Now, North Korea obviously makes headlines almost every day for its nuclear programs, and I think we're, in fact, at the um, one of those higher peaks of North Korea's nuclear tensions, especially in the Northeast Asian region these days. Um, what is your assessment of the current North Korean regime's foreign policy? North Korea well, wants to uh, reach the goal of a nuclear state uh, within a very short span period of time. That's why uh, now the Kim Jong-un regime is accelerating its uh, process of completing the nuclear, you know, the program as well as the ICBM, you know. And uh, Kim Jong-un regime uh, wants to uh, show to America uh, that uh, North Korea is capable uh, to strike American territory uh, with uh, ICBM tipped with uh, nuclear weapons. So North Korea uh, so far has never stopped the development of its nuclear weapons uh, even uh, the, during the period of Kim Il-sung and the Kim Jong-il. But the Kim Jong-un is a little bit more, you know, open and provocative in his way to nuclear uh, weapons state. And uh, he believes that uh, he can complete this uh, process uh, within a period of one year when there is a political turmoil or transition in South Korea because of presidential election and also the change of U.S. administration. So it is uh, a right time, uh, Kim Jong-un believes, that to complete this process. That's why Kim Jong-un regime, you know, looked a little bit in a uh, hurry in that process. What is it that North Korea wants? Is it dialogue with the U.S. or is it hostile standoff with the U.S.? Because it's a little confusing because they seem to be using these different cards to bring the U.S. to a negotiations table. So dialogue amongst the two, of course, not with others. Is it that or is it hostile standoff? Oh, the, as I said, you know, the goal of Kim Jong-un regime is to get the uh, nuclear status uh, from America. But so far, the Americans' policy towards North Korea uh, was denuclearization. Uh, the format of Americans' policy was denuclearization first and then the dialogue next. Mm -hmm. So basically, the world community and America uh, has not, I have not yet, you know, the, the accepted North Korea as a nuclear state and so far a lot of uh, resolutions and the decisions were made to a uh, sanction of uh, North Korea. But Kim Jong-un uh, wants to get rid of these uh, sanctions and he wants to uh, justify his past history of uh, provocations. Uh, that is the current goal by Kim Jong-un. North Korea, obviously, to my understanding so far, is not going to be earning a nuclear state status. Some people do not think like that because, you know, there is uh, already uh, a precedent in world history of uh, nuclear arms race. For instance, uh, India and Pakistan, you know, have got the status of uh, nuclear state, even though 
the world MPT system uh, does not recognize these two countries as a nuclear state. But what happened, you know, that uh, India and Pakistan uh, conducted at the several nuclear tests in a very short span of time, and they made a kind of, you know, the promise to the world community of, of you know, the further ban of their, of their nuclear test in return for uh, removal of the sanctions. And what they really achieved is that these days, you know, India and Pakistan is, are not in the, the list of sanctions by the world community. So uh, to some extent, India and Pakistan achieved their goal. And Kim Jong-un regime wants to follow uh, the suit and what they think can achieve uh, in a way like uh, they can promise a kind of you know, temporary ban on nuclear, you know, the test or an ICBM test in return for uh, easing the sanctions mm -hmm. against North Korea and the halt of South Korean U.S. joint uh, military the drill. And uh, some people actually these days are more or less, you know, uh, supporting uh, this kind of, you know, the way of solving North Korean issues. I know uh, the Chinese foreign minister, you know, the Wang, he proposed uh, a kind of, you know, the deal, uh, freeze for freeze and uh, suspension for suspension, you know, in other words, Chinese proposed the uh, halt of uh, U.S. military exercise uh, and the deployment of thought in South Korea in return mm -hmm. for uh, the ban on North Korea's nuclear test and ICBM test. Uh, in a word, uh, that kind of proposal is based on a kind of compromise on the current North Korean nuclear dress. But China, however, is against North Korea's nuclear programs, however. Yes. China seemingly is unhappy with many things that North Korea conducts these days. For instance, North Korea, you know, tests nuclear bombs or launches its missiles without notifying China first and the likes. And it seems like we've seen a lot more friction, if you will, um, between North Korea and China in recent days compared to previous uh, years. Would you agree with that? Oh, uh, a Chinese uh, has a little bit, you know, the, the very difficult, you know, the feelings. For instance, one hand, you know, they uh, should oppose the North Korea's nuclear program because, you know, if uh, this kind of, you know, the present uh, the status with uh, North Korea with nuclear weapons, you know, goes on, then uh, Chinese is afraid of the next stage where uh, South Korea or Japan may uh, think of developing nuclear weapons by themselves, you know. And what you see concerns most for Chinese is that if South Korea and Japan is on its way of uh, arming itself with nuclear weapons, then it could influence the Ch Taiwanese, you know, uh, for possible uh, nuclear arming. So that is the scenario which Chinese would, you see, not, you know, allow in any case. But on the meanwhile, now Chinese now are contemplating that what could be the best way to maintain North Korean system if the nuclear weapon is the only guarantee to maintain the stability of Kim Jong-un regime, then uh, China has to accept that reality and let North Korea allow have that kind of nuclear you know, the weapon. So what most important for Chinese is the stability of Kim Jong-un regime. And if nuclear weapon is the only way to stabilize the current Kim Jong-un regime, then 
uh, China is ready to accept that scenario. So is it the fact that North Korea is fully aware of such concerns by China and perhaps using it to its leverage? Of course, you know, uh, North Koreans are very well aware of these, you know, uh, the Chinese dilemma and also uh, North Koreans are very well aware that uh, in any case, uh, China cannot, you know, abandon the uh, strategic assets of North Korea. Now, it makes me wonder, who makes these calls in North Korea? Is it Kim Jong-un and Kim Jong-un alone? Because Kim Jong-un then would mean that he is the best of the best, the brightest, the brightest in every single sector in in the world uh, global arena. So he makes foreign policy decisions, he makes economic decisions, he makes you know cultural decisions, he makes ideological decisions, everything. So I wonder who makes the call, who, who makes the decisions on these foreign policy initiatives? Of course, there are certain group of people, you know, uh, who advise and uh, support Kim Jong-un leadership. Who are these advisors? Of course, it is a kind of, you know, the hidden organization in North Korean society. The ordinary North Korean people even didn't know the existence of uh, this organization because according to the structure of North Korean, uh, the power system, it was never, you know, uh, the broadcasted or, you know, uh, never was uh, never open to the media. But in North Korean terms, we call it a third floor or either we, we call it a secretariat of the Central Committee of Workers' Party of Korea. So why are they hidden? These are the people who actually give uh, all recommendations, advice or recommendations mm. and Kim Jong-un. But, you know, if uh, Kim Jong-un is seen by uh, the people uh, uh, that, you know, he is... Uh, advised or he is just controlled by uh, this certain group of people, then he cannot be regarded as a kind of, you know, divine being. They are totally disconnected from the society. Now, how likely is a possibility of a summit meeting between Chinese President Xi Jinping and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un? At this moment, it is really unlikely because as far as Xi Jinping is concerned, uh, Xi Jinping regime prefers the continuation of the uh, development of uh, Chinese economy, but uh, his, Xi Jinping's uh, uh, outside, you know, the env environment uh, so far is not very favorable for the continuation of Chinese economy. Xi Jinping, you know, cannot abandon the North Korean factor as well because. You see, North Korea is a kind of bumper zone to him. Mm -hmm. But uh, he can't, you know, they accept uh, Kim Jong-un's visit to China while Kim Jong-un uh, uh, still advocating the policy of openly developing its, uh, the nuclear, you know, the program because mm -hmm. Xi Jinping uh, wants to uh, present the world that the North Korean issue, nuclear issue, is under his control, you know. Mm. So that's why if uh, the summit between Kim Jong-un and Xi Jinping uh, is likely to happen, then there should be a kind of, you know, the compromise between Xi Jinping and Kim Jong-un in advance, uh, like, you know, Kim Jong-un should give a kind of guarantee that North Korea would uh, halt, you know, the current continuation of nuclear program in return for economic aid and the, the removing of, you know, some economic sanctions by China or whatever. But is Kim Jong-un ready to deliver that kind of, you know, the compromise to Xi Jinping? No. Kim Jong-un wants to finish, you know, his own ambition uh, in a very short span of time. So that's why as long as Kim Jong-un uh, is on that, you know, the track, then uh, Xi Jinping cannot, you know, invite Kim Jong-un to China. How desperate is Kim Jong-un for a summit with 
Chinese president. Oh, Kim Jong-un is very desperate, you know, uh, because, you know, uh, it is very important for Kim Jong-un, you know, to legitimize his leadership to North Korea. But uh, so far as a North Korean leader, uh, he hasn't visited any foreign country, mm -hmm. uh, China or Russia. So Kim Jong-un is very desperate. But the nuclear, you know, the position is more important mm. than, you know, the visit to China to Kim Jong-un. Let's talk about what's going on in Malaysia. Yes. So it looks like North Korea Malaysia diplomatic relations have faced, have come to a great obstacle. Um, do you think that diplomatic relations could continue there? North Korean Kim Jong un regime is very desperate uh, to get, you know, the dead body of Kim Jong nam, mm. you know, back to North Korea. And uh, North Korean regime uh, even doesn't mind the cancellation of, you know, diplomatic relations with Malaysia. You know, uh, usually, you know, those, you know, the behavior by North Korea so far is beyond the normal, you know, the imagination. They are, you know, detaining the, uh, the diplomats and the family members of diplomats as a kind of hostage in North Korea. You know, that is really a beyond the normal practice, even the countries, you know, when they are at war, they usually expel the diplomats and the family members, you see. Mm -hmm. No country in human history so far detained uh, diplomats as kind of hostage. Every country respected a kind of privilege and immunity of diplomats. But North Korea, you know, they want to show the, to Malaysia that they would do anything if Malaysian government does not return the body of Kim Jong-nam, then why? The dead body of Kim Jong Un army is so important. Kim Jong Un is that you know now the world is accusing Kim Jong Un of this assassination, and uh, I think Kim Jong Un cannot escape that kind of denunciation. But what Kim Jong Un most worries is the impact, you know, of the spread of the news of this assassination to its own North Korean people. Mm. So if in the future, North Korean people would hear the news of this assassination of his half brother, then I think the people will be furious. You know, the family members of Kim Jong-nam now uh, are staying in China. Right. So according to the normal, you know, the norm, then the body of Kim Jong-nam should be sent to China, where the family members are. But if Chinese refuse to accept, you know, then Malaysian authority, you see, can't do anything. So the only alternative right. for Malaysia, you know, to send that body back, you know, to North Korea, where Kim Jong-nam was born, so the Chinese factor, you see, would play the main decisive role for the uh, final settlement of this case. So obviously, North Korea is unmindful of its real diplomatic relations with any country at this point, and it continues to find itself isolated more and more from the global arena. What is running through the mind of Kim Jong-un? Oh. Kim Jong-un, you know, uh, wants to play a kind of, you know, uh, the madman's uh, the tactics, you know, so that, you know, he wants, actually he wants to dictate, 
his own uh, the willingness and thoughts on the world community, no matter which country, you know. Uh, so, uh, up to now, you know, some countries, to some extent, you know, the accepted, you know, the this kind of, you know, the math tactics. What happened to the American hostages, you know, in North Korea, you know, North Korea, there's hostages, you know, North Korea said that these hostages can, could only be released if, for instance, Bill Clinton, you know, mm -hmm. came to North Korea for the release of so that, you know, so, so far this kind of hostage policy worked to some extent. And I'm not quite sure whether this time this kind of hostage policy would work uh, again or not, but the development uh, so far seems working. What are your prospects for the Northeast Asian region um, regarding North Korea when we put the North Korea equation into the Northeast Asian policy? These days, uh, there are a lot of debate what we should do and you see what could be the best way to solve the current crisis and many people proposed a lot of you know the new initiatives and ideas how to deal it but uh, most of those you know the ideas and initiatives are uh, to my interpretation based on the possibility of uh, removing the North Korean uh, nuclear weapons by persuading you know, Kim Jong-un regime. But to me, actually, you know, that this is not the matter, matter of the quality or contents of the incentives to Kim Jong-un regime. The only way to solve the current and the future crisis, you know, on North Korea is the elimination of uh, Kim Jong-un regime. And in order to reach that goal, I think the first most important thing we should do is that we should show our full determination towards North Korea and China that South Korea and America are ready and are fully determined to do anything to remove Kim Jong-un regime and Secondly, I think we should try to avail all possible means uh, to remove you know, Kim Jong-un regime from the ruling by first you know, disseminating information, educating North Korean people you know, for resistance you know, and you know, uprising. That is the only way to solve the problem. So what you're saying is, as a diplomat, there is no diplomatic way to resolve this issue of North Korea vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world. No, Kim Jong-un will never, you know, uh, abandon and give up its nuclear program. We should convince uh, Chinese authority that the reunified of Korea and removal of Kim Jong-un regime will bring a lot of benefit to China as well. That is the most important thing at this moment. So China holds key? Yes. I think North Korea will, in the, in the shorter term, in the next few months at least, will be a very difficult puzzle for the rest of the world to put together and come up with a solution. I think so, yeah. Well, thank you so much for today's talk. Thank you.